Hi everybody, I'm Victor Brick and welcome to July's Good Old Uncle Vic. The answer to last month's trivia question in the song Bye Bye Miss American Pie to what was Don McLean referring to when he said the day the music died. The answer, he was referring to February 3rd, 1959 and the plane crash that claimed the lives of Buddy Holly, Richie Valens and JP the Big Bopper Richardson. The trivia question for this month in a typical Major League Baseball game, how many baseballs are used? Again, in a typical Major League Baseball game, how many baseballs are used? You can email your answer to jamie at brickbodies.com. My oldest brother John died last week. He was 62 years old. He died suddenly of heart failure at his home in Florida. Now why am I telling you this? Not because I want you to feel sorry for myself or to share my feelings but I want you to know a little bit about my brother John because he was one heck of a brother. My good friend Jimmy Sandusky said that when we think of John we should remember the good times. Jimmy should know as he lost a brother too. And that's what this is, a tribute to my brother John and the good times. So who was John Brick? He was the oldest of my three brothers and like all older brothers he was always standing up for me. I remember the time in Hawaii when I got in a fight with Kenneth Keoho at the pool in Foster Village. I was only six at the time, or maybe seven, and Kenneth was seven years old, four years older than me. So he was beating me up and I wanted to stop, but he wouldn't let me. Finally, my brother John stepped in, and by now a lot of the kids had started gathering around. Finally, my brother John stepped in and said he'd had enough. But Kenneth's older brother, Lonnie, said, no, let him keep fighting. And of course, I wanted to stop and I was crying so John stepped in and the next thing you know Lonnie and John were fighting. Well John hit Lonnie Keoho once in the stomach and Lonnie started to cry and that was the end of that. And that's what big brothers do, stand up for you. He had a great sense of humor. He was always laughing at jokes usually about himself. He wasn't that good at telling jokes but he was great at laughing about himself. Everybody had a favorite Uncle John or John story. My favorite is the time that I got in an accident when we lived in Montgomery County and we were going over to uh, the University of Maryland. I got an accident on Route 1 near, uh, near the university. A guy had, ran a, had run a red light and hit me and he said that I had run the red light. So the next thing you know, we ended up in court with John as my quote, star witness. First, John's in the back of the, of the uh, courtroom and he's reading the paper. So the bailiff comes over and says that he's got to stop reading. So all of a sudden John gets in a bad mood. And he's sitting in the back of the courtroom with his long trench coat on, with long winter coat on with a hood. And he's sitting there all dis dis disgruntled. And the judge calls him to be a witness. And John stands up and he starts walking through the courtroom with his hand raised over his head and his finger wagging like a courtroom lawyer. We have sworn statements from foreign exchange students that my brother is innocent. Now we did have a foreign exchange student in the car at the time. That's why we were going over to the University of Maryland to sh show the foreign exchange student the school. But he had long since gone back to Spain and we had no such statements. The court's going crazy, everybody's laughing, the judge is banging with the gavel on the, on the um, you know, banging with his gavel, order the court, order the court. So John gets all, as I said, all defensive and he sits in the chair now and he's got his arms crossed and a frown on his face and the judge tells him to explain what happened. So John, trying to be real, right and proper, goes, we were traveling westbound on Route 1. Or was it northbound or on Route 1? Or was it eastbound on Route 1? And then he turned to the judge and said, do you have a map? <laughs> of course, the courtroom started laughing again. The judge is banging with his gavel. And so finally, John finished his testimony and he went back to sit down. And the driver of the other vehicle got up and took the stand for his turn to, to, to relate the events. So the judge asked him his name and the guy goes, my name is Woodrow Jackson. The judge had had enough. I never even got an opportunity to testify. I got points, I was fined, I was found guilty, and I even had to go to traffic school in Prince George's County. Prince George's County. All because of my brother John. John was the most talented person I know. A great athlete and a talented musician, his favorite sport was track and field. He was also my biggest fan. He used to love to take photos of myself and my teammates when we were running, especially cross country. He would run farther than we would and faster than we would. We'd be running along and on the cross country course and we'd see the shadow moving through the woods and all of a sudden he'd jump out from around the corner, kind of like Cato in the Inspector Clouseau movies and snap a photo of us. We'd all kind of go, whoa! And then he'd be dashing off again, run all the time, again, wearing that long winter coat, running farther and faster than we would and we were in the middle of the race. 
Perhaps his greatest strength was his mind. John was my trivia lifeline. I knew that if I had a question about anything, I could call him and two things were almost certainly to be the case. One, he would be asleep and two, he would know the answer. Unfortunately, John never realized his potential during his adult life, but I will tell you that his heart was always in the right place and everybody that knew John loved him. I'd like to close with one of John's favorite poems, To an Athlete Dying Young by A.E. Hausman. The poem's about a young runner who passed away long before his time. It starts out talking about how they once cheered the boy through the marketplace after he had won a big race and how they were now bringing him home through that same marketplace to lay him down at his final resting place. Some of you may not understand the poem as I read it, but I know John will. To my brother John, the old cross-country runner. The time you won your town the race, we cheered you through the marketplace. Man and boy stood cheering by, and home we brought you shoulder high. Today the road all runners come, shoulder high we bring you home, and set you at that threshold down, townsman of a stiller town. Smart lad to slip betimes times away from fields where glory does not stay, and early though the laurel grows, it withers quicker than the rose. Eyes the shady night has shut, cannot see the record cut, and silence sounds no worse than cheers after earth has stopped the ears. Now you will not swell the rout of lads that wore their honors out, runners whom renowned outran, and the name died before the man. So set before the echoes fade, the fleet foot on the sill of shade, passing into death, and hold to the low lentil up the still defended challenge cup, and round that early laureled head will flock to gaze the strengthless dead, and find unwithered on its curls the garland briefer than a girl's. Take care, John. Love you, man.